Very good evening. Jai Shri Krishna. Thank you for joining me for today's Sai Satcharitra Parayan. I hope you had a very good day today. So let us go through the most beautiful chapter about a great saint, um, Gola. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Shri Saraswataya Namaha, Om Shri Guru Dattatre Namaha, Om Shri Mahalakshme Namaha, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Be Namaha. Shri Sai Satcharitra, The Life and Teachings of Shri Di Sai Baba, Chapter 12. Shri Saint Gola Ram Darshan. My obeisance to Shri Ganesh, to Shri Saraswati and Shri Guru Maharaj, to the family deity, to Shri Sita Ramachandra, my most humble obeisance, I bow in reverence to the most venerable Guru Shri Sai Nath. Glory be to you, O Sadguru Sai Nath. I bow my head at your feet in obeisance unperturbed by passions and forever self-absorbed that you are. Have mercy on him, that is me, who has taken refuge at your feet. Truth, knowledge and joy incarnate, a store of blissful happiness. You are the source of comfort and pleasure to the suffering, humanity, who are scorched by the worldly sorrows. Your teaching of non-duality removes the illusion of duality from the minds of even the most slow-witted of people. Most fortunate indeed are, are those who have not only described you as all-pervading and as expansive as the sky above, but have actually experienced these qualities. To protect the sadhus and to destroy the wicked, this is the purpose of the incarnation of God on this earth. But stranger still is the case with these saints. To them the sadhu and the wicked are both equal. Their heart knows not to differentiate between them as one being great and the other mean. Both are the same to them. In fact, the saints are, in a sense, greater than gods themselves. For moved by compassion and love for the meek and the poor, they first set their unrighteous on the path of righteousness. How profound and how beautiful this is and so timely. You know what? The ways of saints are completely unfathomable. I, I think I keep saying this, um, I don't know, a million times every single day we do these lessons. You cannot fathom, you cannot describe their greatness, you cannot understand why they do what they do. And most importantly, a very important point is mentioned. Whether somebody is a wicked or good, both are equal to them. And most importantly, they first set the unrighteous on the path of righteousness so the opportunity for the wicked is more than even for the righteous people. Why? Because you need to give everybody an opportunity to rise above and become divine. That is why they are very compassionate about it. See, for those who are good, yeah, they are good. They are already on the path of righteousness. So what is there to go and do with them? Uh, it's only to reinstate uh, re the lessons again and again so that they don't fall off that righteous path. But their, their grace is far more greater on these unrighteous people because it is an opportunity so that they can uplift them from where they are so that they can put them on the righteous path so that they all can become divine. This is the purpose of the great masters. You need to understand. Sometimes even I ask my Guruji, why do you show so much more compassion on somebody who's being so bad and mean to you or saying something's wrong? He says, no, it is not. They are ignorant beings. They do not understand what they are doing. And that is why Lord Jesus also said to Father in heaven when he was on the cross, Father, forgive, uh, forgive them for they are ignorant, for they do not know what they are committing. They don't know what they are doing. So please forgive. And that is why even my Guruji in one of the satsangs in Uddhav Gita over this, you know, last weekend where the session, this, uh, we do Uddhav Gita on Saturday 6.30 to 7.30 on Krishna knows, you can watch that. In that he's mentioned very clearly that if, if, if somebody is doing bad to us and we get angry, you just need to pray saying that, um, uh, Lord God, please forgive them. And, um, you know, just forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. You need to forgive. You have to be forgiving. So you have to ask that and on not, not say that, oh, they should, you should, uh, you know, take revenge on them or do something harm to them. We should never ask bad for anyone. On the contrary, we should ask the God to show them the path because they have gone astray. It is very important. Um, you know, imagine if, a, if your child being a mother, you care about your child so much. 
you want your child's well being you want your child to be well behaved and um, you know very good um, so what would you uh, as a mother do you always want your you know you're ensuring that your child walks the right path or the righteous path similarly the guru is ever compassionate he wants all his children to follow in the righteous path he doesn't want you to fall you know um, fall off the track and and become unrighteous so the the gurus are ever compassionate and their compassion is far more greater on this wicked or unrighteous people to the ocean of worldly life there are the great the sage there are as the sage agasti to the darkness of ignorance they are the, as the sun it is thus in them that god dwells in fact they are not different from god at all my sai is one amongst these and has appeared on this earth for the welfare of his devotees he is nyandev incarnate fixed in the grandeur and light of kaivalya oneness of god with great compassion and love for all the living creatures he was yet totally without any attachment to all else but though he had affection for one and detachment for the others he looked upon all equally and without hostility without enmity or friendship treating rich and poor alike such was the sai the great mahatma and now listen to his greatness and glory absolutely i think every single chapter every single day when we um, do the parayan this is one thing very clear that sai doesn't make any differentiation between the rich or the poor the wicked and the good he's always compassionate about everyone he treats everyone equally um, it doesn't matter who you are whether you give him something or you don't offer him something it doesn't matter to him he is all knowing he is omnipotent omniscient and omnipresent and he is uh, is the ocean of love he is filled with compassion and kindness for his devotees so let us listen to this beautiful story about sai saints expend freely of their accumulated merit in the cause of their devotees to whom they are drawn by their loving devotion and no obstacle neither the hill nor the dale is too great for them to overcome when they rush to the rescue of their devotees there are people who in their ignorance know not what spirituality is they are caught up in their attachment to their wife sons wealth leave out these poor ignorant creatures even god is merciful loving and tender to these ignorant guileless beings but those who turn their backs to god and move away from him burn in their own conceit this is very true of everyone you know it's it's such an important verse you need to understand what is being taught here is that he's saying there are people who in their ignorance know not what spirituality is this is something my guruji was telling me this morning a very funny incident happened um, yesterday so when i was meet i met my parents my dad said something and i kind of got a little upset with him as to why he is he talking like this why doesn't he understand and then my guruji when i came and said the same thing to my guruji my guruji said very beautifully you know what they are not in spiritual they do not understand spirituality because they have only understood the way of religion which is how their forefathers their ancestors have practiced and they have blindly followed all those practices without even questioning it and today when somebody has a way of life they cannot understand what spirituality is and what god means really to them worshiping some idol or following certain ritualistic practice is spirituality and uh, the funny part is that they don't even know why why is somebody in spiritual they just cannot get that and also a human being is born of his own nature he cannot come out of that so somebody is not able to overcome the mind imagine one of the most beautiful lesson here what is being taught in every scripture is that how to overcome your mind how not to react how to be a good self how to how to love how to be devoted all these things and then my guruji said imagine he doesn't even have a guru he he just knows what he has learned all through his life and because of some unfulfilled desires as if and the human nature people say certain things and behave in some manner you know what my guruji says you must be compassionate with these being they are ignorant they don't know what spirituality means so this is how my guruji teaches me and he sets an example by forgiving them and forgiving everybody else he teaches us to live like him 
how to forgive this is what happens when you are in the company of the great masters and that is why we say you need to always listen to satsangs and keep the company of the holy because when you keep looking at them you emulate and you become like them just like the kitaka bird which is the 24th uh, guru of lord datatriya when the kitaka kept watching that it became that so that is what you have to do even god is merciful loving and tender to these ignorant guileless beings but those who turn their backs to god and move away from him burn in their own conceit but what is said here is that see as long as you are following god then there is no issues even if they are guileless or ignorant god is going to forgive them god is going to always you know bestow his grace upon them but in self conceit if you turn your back on god then you are going to burn in that itself nobody can come to your rescue not even god even the great masters can't come and help you because you cannot turn your back to god because god is the ultimate thing that is the most important thing you need to understand a saint will be moved to compassion and will take the ignorant under his wings so that faith may spring in them at once but vain is the arrogant pride of learning absolutely true if you're ignorant it is fine because the saint will take you under them you know under their wing and and nurture you care you and put you on the path but if you show you know if you show your ig arrogance or pride of learning of your knowledge and trying to say i know so much i've done this i've done that uh, you know who do you think you are if you talk all these language and try to question and doubt then nobody can even save you the saint is not going to do anything because you can't go to a guru with your arrogance and ego and pride and what not you need to have a little bit of humility you need to know that this world is not what you think you cannot see beyond your nose so why are you telling that i know my experience 1947 is not the year you know we are not living in 1947 to talk about the same stories life has moved on time has evolved a man also has to transform and change but if you are going to be stuck in that nobody can save you god alone help we can't do anything not even the guru can do anything about it the foolish who consider themselves learned are puffed with empty pride and deride the path of devotion but not for us the company of these fool absolutely my guru ji says if somebody is saying something bad it's it's up to them why are you getting involved why should you react don't bother about it don't even listen you know don't even hear forget about listening not listening is the it, it, it's not it's not even recommended you don't even hear you know you just shut both your ears this is exactly what my guru ji teaches we are not here to listen to this somebody's diatribe and whatever that nonsense they want to talk on the contrary we just need to shut our ears and we have to only talk the path of devotion love and devotion because these do these people think that their life is only all about i me myself it's about that they have lived a life they are taken care they are you know today they believe that it is it, it is um, it is their birth right that the children take care of them and what i don't seem to understand is they forget that it is not we you know who even if the children not have to take care of them they don't understand that it's not the children who have given birth to them the one who has created everybody is the divine alone so at the end of the day how he, someone needs to get taken care of it is not anybody's choice it is the divine will the divine is the father of this universe mother of this universe he knows how to take care of everybody because he's the one who's actually rightfully given birth to you and me i am nobody just because i'm born of some womb doesn't mean that they have ownership that this is their daughter they can behave out whichever way they want but you know what As when you are on the path of spirituality uh, on the path of when you are in spirituality and on the path of spiritual you need to understand the world can behave with you in any which way they want to because they are only talking from their ego and mind stem point of view and you are not this body that is the knowledge you need to establish no so who are they talking to this body this body is nothing it comes from the elements and goes back it is there only to serve a purpose the purpose is to attain the divine that is it but what happens to a man they get lost in their ego and what not and just waste their life it's so sad to see them you can only pity such people we want neither the revolt against the varnas nor yet an undue exaggerated pride in them we should not turn rigid at adherents of varnashram dharma nor be the uh, pretentious learned pundits who deny the very authority of the vedas those who have mastered the vedas and the vedangas and are thereby intoxicated with pride in their learning 
it is they who come in the way of devotion and have no hope of being saved an ignorant man will overcome the fear of worldly life on the strength of his faith but no one can ever solve the puzzles of these learned pundits you know this is again a, a very interesting uh, uh, thing here what baba is teaching here that see there are a lot of this learned pundits you know who think that they are the knowers of the veda vedas and shastras they kind of recite <clears throat> the vedas they have by heart at bhagavad gita you know what not and they show the pride that they are way to learn it but here we are not interested in uh, in these pundits you know and you cannot come and uh, make a show of your knowledge first of all um, lord shri krishna has said that when you have to you know attain devotion to him you even have to surrender that knowledge that you have learned to overcome the ignorance knowledge is given so that you can cut uh, cut asunder the ignorance and you can evolve on the path of devotion to attain the divine so that knowledge is also has no use it is it is a way it becomes a way knowledge it's only used till that moment you have to you know overcome your ignorance but beyond that the knowledge also has no purpose and that is why lord shri krishna said when you, you have to attain devotion you have to surrender that knowledge unto my feet and only then can you attain me this is the path but you know there are people who kind of uh, make a show of the knowledge that they know that there's no use you cannot uh, have the arrogance of knowledge even the arrogance of knowledge will make you fall one day you will, your pride will get crumbled up please know that never carry the arrogance of knowledge i know i am the greatest i <coughs> i have learned so much i know this i know this i know is something that we need to stop so don't make a show of the knowledge that you have because it is no use today if you say i this body has no knowledge i don't know anything i have not learned anything whatever the knowledge and that words that has to come from this body it's just flowing through because of the grace of the divine they work through this body which is just nothing but a tool or a mere conduit for a purpose where here i am studying this sai sat charitra and you're listening to it i'm only a conduit but i have no knowledge when i say i i know then it becomes my ego and arrogance who am i i who is this i to know there is nobody it's only knowing there is only knowledge that exist i don't know i have no knowledge that is the truth the i cannot know so that is where it says it's we have to always say thou it is never about i and we need to always show the humility that is very important by reposing faith in the saints the ignorance of the ignorant will be dispelled and the learned who pride themselves on their own learning will be spared numerous doubts and uh, surmises giving rise to good thoughts and feelings in their hearts this is what happens it's so beautiful by reposing faith in the saints the ignorance of the ignorant will be dispelled and a learned who pride themselves on their own learning will be spared numerous doubts giving rise to good thoughts and feelings in their heart this is so beautiful the transformation of anybody can happen when you surrender unto the lotus feet of the guru you don't need to you know you can be wherever you are you know my guru ji always will say oh i have removed you you are you were in the gutter i have taken you from that muck you know and today i am polishing you are that um, you are that uncut diamond and today i am chipping you very hard it's going to hurt because you have to go through that process um, a diamond cutter is a lapidarist you know and he is going to give the finest of this uh, chip so that you can become the most priceless diamond in this world that and you can shine brighter with with such a beautiful luster in it and that is what the master does he he chips and every chip that he gives you it's going to be very painful you know how beautiful is this lesson because just before this lesson that i am learning i myself have to undergo an experience to to understand what it means to live this lesson because if you practically do not experience the meaning of what is being taught then how will you learn so the 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 divine the way the guru works is he uses everybody in your world as a catalyst so that the lesson can be taught to you so don't get carried away by how people behave what happens know that everything is happening for the good alone there is always progress in everything there is nothing bad bad and good doesn't exist everything is evolving through to a progress it's it's progression alone 
but when you when you go away on the path and become unrighteousness then you're stopping the progress but if you're constantly evolving then then know that no matter what events happen just have the faith everything is going to be fine and that itself will sail you through just faith in the divine that it is happening for the good there is something good going to come out of it i'll tell you a very beautiful thing that happened to me um, when i was when initially when i was with my guru when i started my journey i i didn't know what it how how what is the spiritual journey all about i didn't know um, initially he said to me oh it's your honeymoon period you know it was 3 months and it was so sweet it was just um, happy happy state it, it was it was very beautiful blissful um, you know i i just felt like i'm flying all the time you know that that state of high whatever that was it it was all um, life was hunky dory it 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 felt like it was i was on a very different realm altogether i was not on planet earth but when i actually began uh, and that uh, you know evolving that is when things started become difficult i didn't know how to um, how to navigate it and one fine day um, i just prayed prayed to his gurudev i was saying you know to show me the path and guide me because i i want to make sure that um, i learned and have this absolute faith in my guruji and that time his gurudev lord datatre just said one beautiful lesson you know one uh, very nice lesson he gave me and he said know that everything is happening for good alone and just have faith in your guru even in the worst of the times no matter what he does with you just have that faith and hold unto your guru's feet never leave that this is one lesson i will never forget even in the worst times when i'm just feeling like it's too much i can't have i cannot take it anymore you know that one lesson will always ring in my ear in my heart it it just remind me everything is happening for good alone have that faith that faith has evolved me today to where i am and will continue to evolve me to where i have to be that is the beauty of spirituality and the faith in your guru because he is just holding your hand he is walking you through he is the helmsman who is going to cross you over to the uh, cross you over to the shore you know that's who he is so hold his hand don't never ever give up um, we should never never leave our guru or lose faith in our guru no matter what he puts you through because that is the guru is only doing it for your own good it's a way to purify your heart your mind so that you can surrender completely unless this purification doesn't happen you cannot completely evolve and attain your spiritual being how can the divine Uh, come and rest in your heart when that heart is having all that muck and the grime you know um, it can you cannot it has to be clean it has to be pure uh, you know literally pure uh, crystal clear not even a, a speck of dust has to be there that's the purification you have to go through um, and only then the foundation can be establish form me otherwise you will fall out there are so many stories where we have learned yeah you can soar extremely high on your spiritual wheel and then it is very easy to fall from there why because the foundation was not established in that absolute uh, strong manner and so the establishing of that has to happen which means you have to go through that fire you have to purify that purification is painful that is why we say tapas charya you have to tap tap means you have to burn you have to wear out you have to remove all your muck and dirt and everything and throw out and then you become that pure absolute pure 24 karat gold the purest form of gold you become so go through it and it's not painful sometimes yeah it it feels painful but it's not sometimes you you tend to understand when you surrender to the divine things will become easy you'll understand everything is beautiful life is beautiful the process is amazing um at that moment you might feel the pain but when you go when you go ahead and from there when you look back you will feel how grateful you are for those experience because that what makes you who you are you empower the divinity within you that's the beauty of spirituality and now just listen to what a strange what a strange thing once came to pass out of sheer good fortune a rigid ritualist was thus destined to enjoy the rare good fortune of meeting sai his avowed purpose of the visit was quite different from what fate will it to be as a result he gained by his visit to shirdi where he had darshan of his own guru you must listen o listeners to the most interesting tale 
which brings out the greatness of the guru and he gives an actual experience of his love to the guru devotees once a rigid ritualistic agnihotri brahmin mule by name came from nasik the holy place of pilgrimage to shirdi by virtue of his accumulated past merit without a store of such merit no one could stay in shirdi even for a moment however firm one's resolve to stay might be all machination machinations uh, failed before baba's wish how beautiful it is again i think from the very beginning this one point very clear here the the reason you get to meet the guru is only because of your past accumulated merit and if there was no merit and the god's grace on you you cannot meet the guru that is what is mentioned here and here he is saying that however you know um, however you might however strong you might have the desire to meet but till that merit is not there till the grace of the god is not there you cannot meet um, that is what is being reemphasized every single time when they say that somebody came to meet baba how do they come why are they coming that is the most important thing you need to know everybody is the grace is not on everybody but um, when when all like i said the human birth the burning desire um you know from your innermost being and the grace of the god when all these three things come together is only then that the guru finds you and he brings you to he brings you to his shrine that is when you meet the guru this is something you should not forget ever so know that if today when you have you have a guru you must have that grace and that is why you are meeting him so don't waste that moment and don't lose that opportunity to learn from the guru and evolve on your path one may well say i will go and stay there as long as i wish but it is not in his hands to do so for he is totally in the power of another many who had firmly resolved and were certain um, absolutely certain of succeeding gave up the effort ultimately in helplessness sai is a deity with his own indomitable will before whom the conceit of others fall fall off altogether like we say man proposes god disposes you cannot think that you can your mind can outdo the divine power so please never ever have that conceit and don't let your mind ever think and something like that they are all knowing and they are god almighty themselves and know that their power is far superior than you can ever your mind stupid uh, self conceit that you can think about till such time as it is destined baba will not remember us nor even he, will his praises fall on our ears where then is the question of our being inspired to take his darshan so beautiful see it said i'm going to read this verse once again please listen to it very attentive till such time as it is destined baba will not remember us nor even will his praises fall on our ears when where then is the question of our being inspired to take his darshan so only at the god's appointed timing can you meet that divine that perfect moment has to come not otherwise and that is a divine will alone it is not in your hands that's exactly what is being said here many had cherished the fond wish to go for the darshan of sai samarth finally sai attained nirvana but such an opportunity never came their way there were others who kept on postponing the visit from time to time and their propensity for delaying itself came in the way of their visit ultimately they never made it to shirdi and baba too passed away postponing it from mo- morrow to morrow in the end they missed the opportunity to meet him in person and regretted it forever thus they lost the chance of having his darshan altogether it is the unfulfilled wish of all such people that will be satisfied by listening respectfully and with faith to the to these stories although it can be but a poor substitute absolutely true Uh, one of the most important thing here is that if you think you have to go meet the divine and when that opportunity come never ever procrastinate procrastinate because if you procrastinate saying i'll do it tomorrow i'll go next time i'll this the next time doesn't come the time is not going to wait for you that moment lost is lost and it will it will never come back to you and this is a very beautiful lesson my guruji has always taught you know um, if you want to wear some dress now or you want to eat something finish it off now there is no tomorrow there is no, you, you you don't even know what tomorrow looks like it might so happen that you're going to put on weight and you will be outdone um, you know um, you would have overgrown that dress so you know outgrown that dress which means then you're not going to fit into it and you're going to rue all your life why didn't i wear it at that moment and it's always going to be living in regrets never do that 
if you want to meet the divine go meet then because the time is not going to wait and you need to always remember this one very important thing time is lord shri krishna in essence of lord shri krishna himself it is kal it is very much mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam in canto 3 part 2 you should go read about it it's such a profound lesson and lord shri krishna has talked at length about this subject and you can also listen to my guruji's um shrimad bhagavatam lessons which is there on krishna knows you can download the app you can go listen it is on youtube or on you can even uh, log into our website and listen to that it's very very powerful and profound you need to understand the importance of time because we human being think that we have to, all the time in the world and we keep delaying uh, you know doing whatever we have to do now we do it i don't know when the time is going to come we'll keep saying tomorrow 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 there is no tomorrow it is here and the now and that is why there is a saying right uh, what you have to do tomorrow do it now because there is no tomorrow um that's that's and what you have to do it now do it yesterday because who has seen tomorrow nobody knows what tomorrow looks like if you want to live live this moment beautifully very happily lovingly because it's never going to come back why we human think that we have all the time in the world to enjoy our life and not just that we are also going to be by by pro, by you know by uh, uh, procrastinating we are also going to delay our own uh, future by uh, if we had to reach the destination um, in the shortest possible uh, way and shortest possible time we are actually uh, we are actually extending that time and what is going to happen is that when you extend and you keep extending it you are going to be creating more and more and more karmas you are adding more karmas why do you want that shorten it finish it now finish it today today is the opportunity there is no tomorrow do it now here and the now and that is why even buddha says we must live for now there is no tomorrow people think there is all the you know tomorrow is there i will do this tomorrow i will do it then and sometimes we don't pay heed or to what our guru say why they say we can we tell the guru itself oh can i do it tomorrow oh really okay fine sad you know the guru is only going to still look at you and feel very sad because he can't change your destiny because you are letting the destiny play when you obey the command of the guru and immediately do it when the guru said do it now you have to accept his command is ordained and immediately do be disciplined and if you listen to him and act on it then you are you are overcoming the karma by the grace of the i mean you are overcoming the destiny and karma both by the grace of the guru because you obeyed him but with your self conceit and self deceit you you given to your mind and you are going to procrastinate and do it at your own will i am sorry you are already on the path of destiny he has taken charge of you your guru cannot do anything and this is a very important lesson no matter how many satsangs you attend how many times your guru says this one lesson doesn't enter anybody it's very unfortunate um i have also in the initial days when my guru used to say do it now i would say i'll do it tomorrow because i didn't understand it but today i i've learned why time is so important you learn the hard way and that learning is very important because only then you'll realize the mistakes and evolve on to being perfect like you cannot become perfect at least you strive to uh, you know you strive becoming a perfection um uh, you, i mean you aspire to be a perfectionist um you can't be perfect because only the god can be perfect but we have to strive we have to try to excel that is very important so so don't waste your time and give all the time for your spiritual progress listening to the satsangs and if you get a chance of meeting the guru go and spend time with them that will redeem you of your karma instead of wasting your time and being with people and talking all the nonsensical stuff that is not going to give you progress at all but then even those who by their good fortune did go and were satiated by his darshan by his touch were they able to stay in shridhi to their hearts desire well it is baba who must permit absolutely by his own efforts alone no one could no sorry by his by his own efforts alone none could go nor could one stay on however keen his desire one could stay only as baba commanded and return the moment he said go back kaka mahajani once traveled from bombay to shridhi intending to stay there for a week and then come back preparations for the birth Uh, preparations for the birth celebrations of lord krishna would begin in advance the chavdi would be decorated beautifully a cradle would be tied in front of baba's seat a mix great rejoicing kaka had arrived in shridhi a little earlier intending to participate in the festivities of the joyous gokulashtami celebrations in person 
But right at the beginning, as he went for darshan, Baba said, So when do you return home? On hearing this, Kaka was taken aback. Why this question the moment I met you? wondered Kaka. In fact, he was very keen on staying in Shirdi for eight days. But as Baba put the question, he himself prompted the expected answer to Kaka. The answer that Kaka gave was thus the most appropriate one. Whenever Baba gives me the command, I shall return home, he said. And even as these words came from Kaka's mouth, do go back tomorrow, Baba said. Obeying the command with great reverence, he made obeisance to Baba and left on that same day, though it was the very special occasion of the Gokulashtami festival. But later, when he reached home and went to this place of work, he saw that his employer was anxiously waiting for his return. The Muni managing clerk had suddenly taken ill and the employer was in urgent need of Kaka's help. In fact, he had already dispatched a letter to Shirdi calling Kaka back in at once. And when the postman came inquiring after him, Kaka had already left Shirdi. The letter was then sent back and Kaka received it on reaching home. Running contrary to this is the short tale about how the devotees do not understand their own welfare. Where Sai knows it clearly. Just listen to it. How beautiful. You know, this is very, this is so amazing. Sometimes my Guruji will very casually say, you know, um, why don't you go bring this? And we are like, oh, should I now? Do you need it now? Uh, that's a very funny way of asking the Guru. The, the Guru Agya means when he says go bring this now, you just have to go. Your Kaka listened to Baba. He said the most perfect word. When are you going to return? When Baba commands at, at your will. So Baba says go tomorrow and Kaka immediately obeyed. Even though it was a Gokul Ashtami celebration. There is a reason why the divine says you don't know the future, you don't know the past, not the present or what is going to come about. But the divine, are divine, the gurus are almighty God themselves. They're all knowing. So they know what is the welfare for their devotees and their disciples. So they tell you. And we are stupid people who think that, you know, you know, we want to question everything. Can I do it later? Oh, very, very relaxed attitude, not understanding the implications of that word. And, uh, you know, the importance and the urgencies of uh, why that act acting at that moment is so important. My Guruji gives a very beautiful lesson. He's always said this. He had three students sitting with him. And one day he says, um, can you go down and see the time and tell me? There are three different students. And one looks at his watch and says, oh, it's, you know, 12. And the second one says, um, oh, I think the sun is out. It should be 12 noon. And the someone says, oh, the clock is right above your head. Something like that. And there's one student who goes downstairs and he sees the time and comes back and tells it to my Guruji. So doesn't the Guru know that there is a clock right there or there's a watch and he could see anywhere he wants? Why is he giving that instruction? There is a reason for that. Never underestimate what the Guru is saying because we think the Guru is just talking in jest or he's so stupid. No, the Guru is not. He knows the relevance of it. There is a very profound truth or there is an event or an incident or something that has to come about. Why he says what he says and your job is only to do, do not use your mind. And that's a perfect example to show or tell how people use their mind. And they think the guru is stupid sitting in front of them. How sad it is that you are judging. You are that idiot and you are that stupid who is sitting, you know, who doesn't understand the greatness of the guru who is sitting, who is giving you that instruction. Uh, so never, never use your mind. Listen to your guru's word. You know, follow his ordain. You know, the word, the word from the guru's mouth is gospel truth. In fact, uh, I've been doing uh, a guru, guru granth sahib ji. In that, it's only being said. Always be servient, subservient unto the lotus feet of your master. Serve him. Be devoted to him. Take his name. That itself will redeem you and you will attain that naam, that divine. That is what it says. It's so beautiful, the Guru Bani. And it's, a, it's you know, um, Guru Nanak had uh, that, um, he had, the, it's not just the teachings of Guru Nanak, but lot many uh, other you know, um, uh, saints or the gurus who were who were present and Guru Nanak had met. He had combined the entire teachings of this uh, uh, great masters and he's compiled in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. What does this uh, Guru Bani means? It means the guru, words from the Guru's mouth, which means gospel truth. And they worship the Guru Granth Sahib Ji as the God itself. You know, you know how powerful it is. When I went to Amritsar along with my Guruji and experienced in the morning the Palki where they brought this Guru Granth Sahib Ji, it was literally in, in a state of bliss. 
because it is not about what the people did it is about the respect that that where you you see how important that gospel truth is of the you know the teachings of the master um, and you pray to that that is so profound that is so beautiful we should we should never do that just because it's it's a religion or it's it's something that you follow you have to do it because it is guru every guru is the same they are all teaching the same thing the great masters all teach the same thing there is nothing different that they teach but they teach it in their own way they, get, they you know listening to their life stories is very important because they have all gone through their own challenge to evolve where they are actually in one of the earlier verses it was so beautifully mentioned that baba also had to go through his you know r to a sadhana to where he has where he is uh, sorry for becoming that divine being he did not get it easy it's, it's not come to him on a platter but he had that uh, he had the strength and the power and the will to go through that and that is why he became the divine and that is exactly what he's teaching and what we are being taught that we are also the divine being just that we being born of this body we think we are this body this mind and senses to overcome that is why we go on the path of spiritual you have to evolve but at least by being devoted you will get to being some some goodness some divinity will evolve and that has to come through your own self it's it's a it's a um, that is the highest desire that you can have to have that spiritual being um, you know make one goal that you can have that goal should be um, attaining the ultimate spiritual will not anything else once a renowned lawyer of nasik oh sorry i'm running contrary to this tale is the short tale about how the devotees do not understand their own welfare whereas sai knows it clearly just listen to it once a renowned lawyer of nasik bahu saheb dumal by name and one of baba's loving devotees came to shirdi just to have baba's darshan he had intended to take darshan quickly make obeisances at baba's feet and on getting baba's blessings and uti to return at once on his return journey dumla dumal had to get down at nipphard nipphard where he had to attend a court case though such had been his plan baba knew what was right for him and what was not so when he asked leave to return baba refused it to him moreover baba detained him for a week refusing permission in no uncertain terms and the hearing of the court case was also delayed the matter being adjourned thrice dumal was made to stay a few days over a week while on the date set for the hearing the judge too would become unwell never before had the judge suffered such unbearable colic as he did on those days with the result the hearing was inevitably adjourned as for dumal his time was put to the best possible use for dumal it was a privilege of sai's company for his client a relief from anxiety and worry everything came about so easily and effortlessly by just reposing full trust in sai later at the right time dumal was granted leave to go and his work was accomplished accomplished satisfactorily such is the inscrutable leela of sai sorry the court case went on for 4 months the matter passing through the hands of four different judges but in the end dumal succeeded in getting an acquittal for his client now listen to this incident when sai once took up the side of mrs nimonkar wife of his most excellent devotee nana sahib nimonkar wow such a profound lesson you know i think what what the story in the story if you have learned one very important lesson and that is to just obey the command of the guru i'll tell you what happens in my own professional life many a time uh, my guruji will say you know you you have to do this go do this he'll give he, he'll he'll teach me certain things about technology or um, tell me about what's happening in the world it's connected to my job and my growth um sometimes the meetings don't happen and i i would get frustrated oh god i put in all this effort i don't know why the meeting moved um and you know consequently sometimes people even don't answer the calls but you know what i just have that faith there is a reason why it is not happening but when it is required and the time is right that call gets scheduled and the outcome from that is far beyond than what i would have even expected so such is the ways of how the divine work when you repose full faith and trust in the divinity that's how it works and never question my guruji will say okay fine if the call doesn't have happened maybe there's a reason why it's not happened it's okay it's, it's going to happen for the good alone let it happen when it has to happen and then i would reschedule it or if i have to meet some person and they cancel for whatever reason 
I've experienced this all throughout since the day I have landed, you know, I have met my Guruji and I've been on the path. It's not the way I want it. It is how the divine wills it. And what the divine wills is, wills is so beautiful because you can't even ex, you know, expect that outcome which you would have planned otherwise. So trust in the divinity and just go and follow exactly what they tell you to do. Do not use your mind at all. Just surrender to them and keep doing it. It's going to be so beautiful. How things evolve, it's not in your hands. Um, because when you have surrendered, the guru, the, div the divinity takes charge of it. Uh, Vatandar of the village Nimon, the government had also vested in his hands the powers of an honorary, um, honorary magistrate. He was therefore very influential. Eldest among Madhurav's cousin, he was very advanced in age and very highly respected. His wife was also a devout lady and Sai was the titular deity to them both. Leaving their Vatani village, they had both come to stay in Shirdi and pledging their trust in Sai, they spent their days in contentment. Long before sunrise, would they be up and, and would finish their early morning bath, puja, etc. They would then come with unfailing regularity to the Chavdi to perform the Aarti at daybreak. Thereafter, Nana used to stay with Baba till sunset, busy in his service as he recited to himself his daily stotras. He would accompany Baba on his daily round to the Lenti, bringing him back to the mosque at the end. Very lovingly, he served Baba in whatever way he could. The lady would also serve Baba during the day with loving devotion, doing everything in her power to be of use. Only having a bath, cooking the meals or sleeping at night would she repair to her lodgings. The rest of the time was spent by this devout couple in Baba's company morning, noon and evening. If the dedicated service of these two were to be narrated in detail, this book will far exceed its limit. Hence, I shall now narrate only what is relevant in the present context. The lady wanted to go to Belapur, where her son was slightly unwell. So after conferring with her husband, she made preparations to go thither. Later, she consulted Baba too, as was the usual practice, and when he gave his consent, she conveyed it to her husband. Everything was thus fixed for a visit to Belapur. But Nana then said that she must return the very next day. Of course, Nana had his reasons for so saying. And so he said to her, go but return immediately. His wife was rather sad at heart on hearing this. The next day was the new moon of Pola, Pola where she wanted to spend there. Nay, it was her ardent wish, but Nana would not agree. Moreover, it was the new moon and inauspicious for travel. The lady was greatly worried as to how the problem could be resolved. And unless she went to Belapur, her mind would not be at rest. Yet, she did not want to hurt her husband's feelings. How then could she disobey his word? All the same, she made preparations for the journey. And as she was about to set out, she came to make obeisance to Baba when he was going to the Lendi. Whenever people are going on a journey, they bow in obeisance to the gods for a safe journey. This same custom was followed in Shirdi too. And since Sai was their god in Shirdi, whatever may be, may be their hurry and urgency, people always bowed at his feet before leaving. Accordingly, the lady bowed at Baba's feet as Baba stood for a moment in front of the Sate Mara. All young and old, including Nana Sahib de Monkar, who had come there for Darshan, made obeisance to Baba. In front of all these people, and especially in presence of Nana, Baba spoke to the lady, words which were most befitting the occasion. As she lowered her head on his feet and asked for permission to leave, go, 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 quickly, he said, and let your mind be at rest. And having gone so far all the way, stay on for three, four days happily at Bel Belapur. Meet everyone there and then return to Shirdi. Baba's words coming quite unexpectedly brought relief, great relief and satisfaction to the lady. Nimonkar also took the hint. Both were thus satisfied. In short, we make we may make plans, but we know not what has gone before or is to follow after. Only the saints know what is good or bad for us, for there is nothing that they do not know. Past, present, and future is to them as clear as a myroblan, myroblan in the palm of their hand. It follows then that when devotees act in obedience to their command, they enjoy happiness and peace. How beautiful. I think we've discussed this enough. So 
whatever is right for you that is what the command of the divine gurus are if they say go now and come back at this time things will work perfectly see plan like they say uh, plan is a must but don't don't worry about how the outcome is going to be what is the end result going to be so that's why we say man proposes god disposes god knows what is good for you what is what is not good for you so he is going to put you to that um the right direction he's going to show you that path so you just need to walk that path and don't ever question and that is why he's saying here you need to have utmost obedience and discipline you have to listen to to the words of the guru and follow exactly what your guru commands you to do and it's very beautiful this time when i went to london and i was in london and what happened was um, due to the pandemic when they um, they had cancelled some of these meetings and i had to advance my tickets to come back in time my guru ji said very simply this you know i want you to stay this two days you have to finish this meetings and then come back i was little nervous because everybody was traveling back and i wanted to come back two days earlier but i said i'm not going to make the same mistake which i have done before if my guru ji is saying you stay back these two days you finish your meetings there is a reason why he wants me to stay there who am i to have this um, you know self conceit or listen to my mind that there is a pandemic i'm not going to come back safely or not because my guruji knows when i need to arrive and the flight is going to be ready everything is going to happen perfectly and you wouldn't believe it was so beautiful i exactly did what my guruji asked me to do and things were so brilliant and you know in that i'll tell you a very beautiful incident that happened i had to meet someone and when i went to the particular train station the train was cancelled from there and i didn't know what to do but i had to meet and then i said okay fine i found out i figured out there was another station which is just a uh, uh, you know 15 minutes down uh, 15 minutes walk so i had to just go to the other station and pick you know take a train from them it's a different route but i was wondering why all these stress why should i go through but i know there's a reason why that is happening i don't have to panic but you know what i discovered had i not uh, had the train not have uh, got cancelled i wouldn't have gone taken the um, i wouldn't have gone to the other station and taken another train because that gave me the opportunity to experience something different um, i arrived there at a perfect time i went back i came i did few things so everything was so perfectly planned even when the train got cancelled there was a very important reason but the effort i had to run to another place get the train it was so beautiful i learned so many things that's how it is you know you have to always be on the edge my guru ji will always say you know you're always on the edge you are literally you are standing on the cliff it's 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 that roller coaster ride and that is important because it's going to keep you on on your toe and every single day is beautiful in its own self i don't know what tomorrow looks like yes i have my calendar saying i need to do these 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 things but how many things of that is going to happen what is going to not happen i don't know some meetings get cancelled and today i'm absolutely fine i'm quite so chill if things happen it's perfectly fine if things doesn't happen it that's perfectly fine too because that is the will of the divine because the divine only knows what is good for me why some things happen we don't have an answer or why something doesn't happen we don't have an answer but just know this for sure with absolute conviction that that's the most beautiful and the perfect thing to happen and in everything that you must see a good even if there is some difficult times there are some challenges but that is only happening for the good of human kind for your well being alone even this pandemic is happening for the well being of everybody um, we might not be able to see this but the world is going to transform through this and that's the beauty of it how the universe works magic in you know in um, it's like rejuvenating itself and and putting us back on a path which is very important for the progress of this entire universe universe and its creations and now i shall proceed with the narration of the main story to continue what has already been told as to how sai was gracious to mule and gave him the darshan of his own guru i'm going to start this story but actually this is a lengthy chapter so i will have to stop in between and continue it tomorrow so i hope that's okay uh, because uh, we can i'm going to pause after 10 minutes and and after that we'll continue tomorrow the remaining story so let us start and see how much we can uh, uh, how much we can go through mule had really come to meet shrimant bapu sahib butti in shirdi wanting to return immediately thereafter Although such had been his plan, Baba had another purpose for his visit. Listen carefully now to that miracle, to that secret purpose. Mule met Shrimant Bhutti as he in, had intended. 
Thereafter, Butti and some others got up to go to the mosque, seeing which Mule also felt a desire to join them. So he set out with them. Now, Mule had not only studied the six Shastras deeply, but was also proficient in astrology and well versed in um, Chiron. Ch Chiromancy or palmistry. He was absolutely delighted on having Baba's darshan. The loving devotees made sincere offerings to Baba of a profusion of fruit and sweetmeats like pedas, barfi, coconuts, etc. Moreover, there came to the door the farm women to sell guavas, bananas, sugarcane, etc. When Baba so wished, he would buy these things, spending money from his own pocket. He would spend his money to buy a basket of mangoes or call for large quantities of bananas and distribute them to the devotees to his heart's content. Picking up the mangoes one by one in his hand, he would press and rub the fruit between his palms to soften it and then he would pass it on to the devotees to suck the juice. With thus softened, the mango had just to be put to the lips and all the juice could be sucked at once as if from a dish filled with mango juice. The skin and the stone could then be thrown away. Most remarkable was his way with the bananas. The devotees were given the sweet fleshy part of the fruit while Baba would eat only the skin. Oh, how marvellous was Baba's ways. And this fruit would be distributed to all his devotees by Baba with his own hands. While as for himself, only once in a while, he would taste just one out of it all. According to his usual practice, Baba had bought baskets full of bananas on that day and was distributing them at that time. Shastri Bua, that is Mule, was however quite astonished when he saw Baba's feet and had a great desire to read the lines, signs of good fortune, etc. on his feet. Kaka Sahib Dikshit was nearby at the time. He picked up four bananas and placed them in Baba's hands. Somebody urged Baba, Baba, this is Mule Shastri who resides in the holy city of Nasik and by his great good fortune has come here to bow at your feet. Do give him that fruit as prasad. Entreaties or otherwise, unless Baba himself wished it, he would never give anything to anyone. So what could they do? Moreover, Mule too did not want the bananas. He wanted Baba's hand to read the lines and he stretched out his own for it. Baba paid no attention, but continued to distribute the prasad to all. Mule pleaded with Baba, not the fruit, but give me your hand. I can read the lines and the signs on it, but Baba just would not give him his hand. Still, Mule kept on forging his way ahead, stretching out his hand for Baba's. For palm reading, Baba continued to take no notice, as if he was totally unaware of any such happening. And in fact, he just placed those four bananas on Mule's outstretched hand and asked him to sit down. But to give his hand in Mule's, he just refused. He, whose body had been owned out in the service of God all his life, what had he to do with palmistry? Sai, the father and mother to his good devotees, was fulfilled in all his desires. How true it is. What can anybody see the future of the divine? It's so funny. That's how we stupid human beings are. We think we can predict the future of the divine. We come with that ignorant. And that is why Baba says, you know, the, the gurus teach that, yeah, when they're coming, they're full of ignorant. And when they meet the guru, the, ignor the guru removes their ignorance. That is why he's called the dispeller of darkness. Guru means dispeller of darkness. And he removes the ignorance from you. Observing Baba's detached state, his utter disinterest in palmistry, Shastri Bua then restrained himself and gave up the attempt as hopeless. For a while, he sat in silence and then returned to the Vada with others. He then took a bath, clad the sovla and began his daily ritual of Agnihotra. Baba here set out as usual to go to the Lenti and said, let us, take a, let us take with us today an ochre chalk. Uh, we will wear ochre colored robes today. Everyone was surprised and wondered what Baba was going to do with an ochre chalk. Why he should suddenly think of this ochre chalk on that particular day. Such cryptic style was characteristic of Baba. What could one make of it? Be carefully stored in our ears. When one pondered over it, many interpretations could be found for it. Moreover, the words of a saint are never without meaning, but are full of profound significance. 
who can weigh their importance adequately. Absolutely true. Um, even if you think the gurus are saying something in jest or they are making fun, they are cracking a joke, every word from their mouth has such profound meaning and every word from their mouth is the gospel truth and never forget that. Don't go, um, you know, um, just don't fall for the way they speak in a very jestful manner, cracking jokes, you know, talking some, um, you know, double meanings and many different things. They, they do all sorts of things and you cannot judge them and don't go by it. But even in that, there is some profound truth. So that's what he's saying here, Heyman, that keep your ears open. You have to, you know, go and contemplate on it. You will find so many different meanings coming out of it. So you have to cogitate. It's, it's, it's full of knowledge and never discount it. Carefully thought first and then the utterance, such is the usual practice of these saints. And their utterances too are really translated into conduct directly afterwards. As for this established truth, words of the saints are never without meaning and when carefully examined, reveal deep significance. Baba then turned, returned from the lendi. At once the kettle drums, horns, etc. began to resound. Babu Sahib Jog quickly suggested to Mule. So we stop here today at uh, verse 115. We will continue the story tomorrow. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed some very beautiful lessons today. And thank you for joining once again. And you have a very good evening. I'll see you all tomorrow, 7 p.m. Om Shri Mahaganapate Namaha, Om Shri Guru Dev Datta, Om Shri Sachidananda Sadguru, Sainat Maharaj Ki Jai, Om Namo Bhagavade Vasudevaya, Dikambara Dikambara, Shri Pad Vallabha Dikambara, Om Shri Krishna Guru Nathanata, Shri Guru Ve Namaha, Om Devi Durgaya Namaha, Om Shri Krishna Arpanam Namastu, Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru.